I'm going to read a couple of pieces from my book, Sudan's Angels. Thank you everyone for coming out. Rebecca and Ryan, thank you so much for your support. This piece is called, And So I Write. This is an essay, not a poem. Joseph Carey Merrick, whom we know as the Elephant Man, had a congenital physical anomaly. Saji Bartman, who died in 1815, had elongated labia and large buttocks. Both persons were exhibited as sideshow attractions or freak show performers. They were laughed at, poked at for medical examination, and touched inappropriately by audiences misconstrued by malicious minds who didn't want to see or feel their perfect souls. And so I write. Elizabeth Glacier died from a blood transfusion. Arthur Ashe died from a blood transfusion. And Alvin Ailey died from a terminal blood dyscrasia or AIDS. All three persons and millions of others whom by now you knew or knew of passed on from this disease which affects nearly every organ in the body. It is considered one of the most devastating public health problems in recent history. And so I write. Malik Brown, age 14, 1982, didn't survive a beating to the head. Jesse Ramirez in Phoenix, whose assailant had no motive, was beaten and killed. B. Jackson, also 14, did survive a beating like the others, beaten by a baseball bat. But Jackson slowly staggered home, bloodied, battered, and blinded for two months. He was a victim of mistaken identity, but the damage had already been done. And so I write. Virginia Woolf, one of the modern literary figures of the 20th century, suffered deeply from depression, several nervous breakdowns and suicide attempts. She was plagued by mood swings. She ended her life at 59 by putting stones in her pockets and walking into the river Uzi while swallowing her persecutions for the very last time. Ernest Hemingway was an American writer and journalist. He was a giant of words who committed suicide by shooting himself with a shotgun. He had homes and was well-traveled. He came from a history of successful achievers. He was debonair, charming, and well coiffed but something else too depressed him, and that depression enabled such a genius to splatter his brains out from his perfectly chiseled form. Phyllis Hyman, an American soul singer and, no and Tony-nominated actress, was an exquisite beauty, voluptuous and a class act. She was gracious and fiercely passionate about her work. But like many, she suffered with bipolar disorder and depression, was an alcoholic and had weight problems and financial issues. She lost her mother, grandmother, and close friend within a span of one month. And like the others above, felt lonely, felt sad. They felt defeated. It seems the more one has in life, the deeper the, the, the deeper the pain. And so I write. I have to write and do. Thank you. Yeah.